All right, so this week we are talking about more 3D inside Photoshop CS5 Extended. And in this, uh, in this example, we're gonna take a look at text and the different ways we can modify and uh, position text in 3D to get a really interesting effect. And what we're gonna do is I have this word time. You can see that it is just one word on a text layer and it does have a layer style on it. I've got this set in the font called copper plate. If I double click, click to highlight it, you can see it's called copper, copper plate gothic bold. And I've got a bevel and emboss and a gradient overlay on this. You can see it's giving me very interesting effect on there. Now if I turn the effect off, you can see the text is merely filled with a kind of uh, darkish brownish yellow color. And We've got those layer styles on there giving it the full color effect. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and make this a 3D object. So with that text layer selected, I'm gonna go under 3D, go down here to Repose and choose text layer. And it is, uh, as usual, it's going to go ahead and apply an extrusion to this and go ahead and open up the, th the Repose panel as you see right here. And you can see our text is in 3D. Now, as usual, the default extrusion here is a bit much. So we are gonna go into the extrude section and go into the depth and change this to about 0.3. Maybe even thinner than that. Let's go to 0.2. There we go. So that looks pretty good. I'm also going to, let's go ahead and put this back in the home position so it's facing front. And I'm gonna add a little bit of bevel to this. And let's go ahead and add it to the front and the back. Why not? And I'm gonna set the height to two and the width to two as well. So it gives me a little bit of dimension around the edges there almost enhancing that existing bevel that was on there. Remember that bevel layer style we had on there? By adding that layer style and then adding this bevel effect in the 3D, it enhances it that much more. So we've set the, the depth, we've got our bevel set. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And as I've said before, make sure that you put click the home position here so it stays facing front when we go back into Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, what I wanna do is actually separate each of these letters. Now, if I were to go in here and use my 3D rotation tool, you can see that I can move the entire word as a whole 3D object. But I wanna be able to move and manipulate each of the individual letters in here. Even though they are separate ob objects, they are part of the same overall 3D object. So to split them apart, you merely go under the 3D menu again, and then once again go to Repousse, and this time go down here to the bottom where it says Split Repousse Meshes. So we're going to select that, and what it's going to do is go ahead and make each one of these items a separate 3D object. Now, it's not going to make uh, four, as there's four letters here, it's not gonna make four different 3D layers. Notice we are still in the same 3D layer, and I can still move the overall object with my uh, 3D object rotate tool here in the toolbar. However, if I open up the 3D panel, let's go under Window and go to 3D, you can see now in the scene we have different properties for each letter. If I go into the mesh section here, you have each individual mesh for each letter. So we can move them now and manipulate them independently using the mesh rotate tools. Now remember, these are different from the rotation tools in the toolbar. These in the toolbar rotate the overall object, whereas these in the 3D panel rotate the specific meshes. So if I go in here and you can see that it is context sensitive. So if I move my cursor over a particular letter, it highlights it. So let's take this first letter and I'm gonna use the 3D mesh slide tool as you see right here. Click on the T and just click and drag down and it will bring the letter forward in 3D space. Very cool. You can do the same thing to the next one. Now you, you, you can go in here and select each individual letter in the list, but since it's context, content sensitive, you can merely just go in here and just slide it by dragging your mouse over it and then repositioning it. You can even go in here and do things like rotate each individual letter and it will get repositioned. Let's go ahead and take this, maneuver it over here. Just pushing them back in space and this is that third dimension. We're always working in 2D when we're inside Photoshop, working with images or whatever, but now we're in that third dimension and it requires a little bit of different thinking involved. So now if I grab my object rotate tool here in the toolbar and rotate this overall object, you can see what's going on here. We've moved those layer letters back and they're almost overlapping, giving us a very interesting effect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this and actually slide it closer 
to our view here, almost to where the letter T is kind of you know breaking the frame there. And we can go in here and let's just uh, rotate these objects a little bit more, giving them some variation, almost like they're like falling or floating in space. Now, here is the cool thing. They are in three-dimensional space and they look great. But what I want to do is actually give it that much more dimension to really look like that I'm looking at this up close, you know, and normally you, you would see a depth of field blur when that was when something like that's going on. And fortunately, we have depth of field here in the 3D features. If you go into your toolbar and click on the camera tools here and go down and choose the 3D zoom camera tool, you can go up here in the options bar and over here you have depth of field blur. I'm going to take that and set it to 2. You can see it automatic, automatically applies a blur to our image. Now let's say for instance I want the M here to be in focus, which it is for the most part, but if you want to target a specific focus area, focal, uh, focal point rather, just hold down your Option key on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and you see it changes into a little target. And you click on an area, and that area is the now the new focal point. And when you do a render of this lettering, let's go into the scene here and go into the quality and choose Ray Trace Draft, and you can see it's going to start rendering it. And notice the M here is staying uh, in focus. Whereas the, the letters closest to us are blurred and the letters further away have a blur. And that's because of the depth of field we've applied to it. Giving it a very realistic depth um, dimension of time, if you will. <laughs> so I'm not going to let that fully render, but I think you get the idea of it. Now you'll notice that there is some shadows being cast on the letters. Now if you don't necessarily like that or if it seems a little too intense, you can go into that mesh section once again and if you select on each one of these letters, you'll notice that it has cat shadows and cast shadows. Now, if you don't want it to catch or cat or cat shadows, rather, you can simply check that off. But it wouldn't look as realistic. But it is, uh, in some cases, a bit harsh. So what I'm going to do is go in here and change the opacity of each shadow to well, let's try 50%. So we'll go and select the next one, 50%, and just change every one of these. And just know that the default setting for shadows is 100%. So if you encounter a 3D object that has shadows and you're not necessarily liking them, you can turn them off completely or merely go in here and change the opacity of the shadow. Now, one more thing is these letters, we can actually add reflections to them. Let's say this eye right here, if I go over here into the section and I want to, the eye front inflation is what I want here go near the reflections and let's go ahead and set that to 50. When it renders again, we should see the letter in front of it reflecting in there. There it is. There's that T that is reflecting in there. So, so many possibilities of working with letters and 3D by splitting those meshes. Remember to split those 3D meshes. And again, this gives you, if you're considering you know, like doing multiple 3D letters and you're thinking, oh, I've got to do a, uh, a new layer for each letter. You don't have to do that. Just do the whole letter or the whole word or letters or whatever on one single text layer and then split the message meshes this way and then use these tools to keep it as a unified object or use the individual mesh tools to reposition them in 3D space. How cool is that?